from the global resources of ABC News with Terry Moran in Washington, Martin Bashir, and Cynthia McFadden in New York City. This is Nightline, December 10, 2008. Tonight on Nightline, terror at 37,000 feet. As the official report is released, we've got the exclusive tapes of a mid-air plane collision high above Brazil and the extraordinary story of the man who survived the crash against all the odds when so many others did not. Tonight, surviving a mid-air plane collision. Imagine for a moment cruising at 37,000 feet when something hits your plane and tears off part of a wing. You expect the worst, but somehow you manage to make it safely to the ground. That relief quickly gives way to shock and sadness. When you learn it was another plane that hit you, and that plane carrying 154 passengers went down. Well now, stop imagining. This crash really happened and we have the cockpit recordings on tape which Vanity Fair magazine shared exclusively with Nightline. David Wright now reports. This is a story of survival. I don't think I've ever met anyone who has survived a plane crash before. Uh, there aren't many of us. It's also a tale of disaster. A very major plane crash. In fact, at, at the time, it was the largest in Brazil's history. September 29th, 2006. 37,000 feet over Brazil, an Embraer Legacy 600, like the one seen in this promotional video, was making its way north. The Legacy is a state-of-the-art business jet with all the trimmings. Price tag, $25 million. The Legacy is a beautiful airplane. It has what's known as ramp presence. It stands tall. It's a, an airplane that a tycoon can be proud of. We're hoping the uh, clouds break up so we can see the Amazon. Vanity Fair obtained the cockpit voice recordings and shared them exclusively with Nightline. The graphics are a recreation. The audio is real. How you doing? Good. Very good. We're just... Uh plane, trying to get used to the airplane. <laughs> Brand new airplane, smooth as glass, uh, the sky was clear, um, couldn't have been more relaxed back in the passenger cabin. One of the passengers was David Rimmer, vice president of XL Air, the American company that owned the legacy. We were flying from the town in which it was built, San Jose, up to Manaus to spend the night to export the airplane from Brazil and then continue the journey to the United States. Also at 37,000 feet, headed the opposite direction, was a Brazilian passenger jet, Goal 1907. With a lot of passengers. With a lot of passengers. There were 154 people all together aboard that airplane. Brasilia, we are here. We just crossed over the time zone. What the two American pilots didn't know as they made that turn over Brasilia is that the plane they were flying was now on a collision course with Goal 1907. Brasilia, November 600, X-ray Lima, how do you hear? Part of the problem may have been the language barrier. Lima, Brazilian blind, contact 123, that's all 32, Are they speaking English to you guys on the, or Portuguese? They, yeah, they do. <laughs> it, it gets tough sometimes. No, Paul, you know. Portuguese. Part of the problem may also have had to do with the radio frequencies. The legacy drifted out of contact with the ground for nearly 45 minutes. Brasilia, November 600, extra Lima. Control is about to shoot. Uh, we got some radio problems here. Each plane hurtled along, oblivious, each one flying faster than 500 miles an hour. I was standing in the aisle, actually getting an iPod charger from my briefcase. The pilots of both planes had no idea what hit them. And we felt this jolt. Uh oh! Autopilot. What the hell is that? So you're flying along, smooth sailing, mm -hmm. and bang. Bang. And the world changed that moment. For goal 1907, the world ended 30 seconds later with a nosedive into the jungle. recording from that plane shows that the Brazilian pilots fought valiantly to land. These guys had a lot of alarms going off. The passengers were screaming. Uh, but 
they were they were extremely good pilots and they kept flying that airplane all the way down they did not even swear which is highly unusual there were no survivors on board the legacy panic and confusion all right spotty up i did spotty autopilot 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 you want me to fly it? what we got gonna hit i don't know let me uh let me fly it you got it yeah all right we're gonna declare an emergency what the f that was what did you think had happened I had no idea at first, and then immediately somebody called out and said that it appeared that we'd been hit because he looked out the window and saw that part of the wing was missing. Did you have any idea what had hit you? I had no idea at first, and then immediately somebody called out and said that it appeared that we'd been hit because he looked out the window and saw that part of the wing was missing. All right, we're going down. We're clear to mercy. Sit down. I'm going to keep the speed slow. A harrowing half hour trying to find a safe place to land in the Amazon. <laughs> it was the longest 35 minutes I've ever spent um, uh, on this airplane. There's uh, a screen at the front of the cabin and you can watch the altitude go down. And just spent the next half hour plus counting the minutes, counting the feet, um, hoping that the airplane wasn't so badly damaged that we couldn't have a controlled landing. The Legacy finally did manage to land okay, at a remote good. military airstrip. Good job, good job. Funny, good, a good. Alive. You. <laughs> Not until hours later did they learn that a Brazilian plane was missing, and it finally dawned on them what exactly had happened. 154 people. Mm -hmm. How do you get your mind around that? It's hard. It's 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 just terribly sad. The pilots of the Legacy and the executives of XL Air placed the blame squarely on Brazilian air traffic controllers. And the National Transportation Safety Board in a report released today says the controllers were the probable cause of the crash. We're familiar with that story, but we do not believe that it is correct. Today, the Brazilian Air Force released its report blaming the two American pilots, a point of view shared by a San Francisco attorney who represents 60 families who lost loved ones on Goal 1907. They're suing. The official investigation has uh, supported our allegations that the pilots played a key role. They were not flying at the altitude of their flight plan. They were not following the so-called rules of the road. A key point in the dispute has to do with the legacy's transponder, the beacon that automatically confirms a plane's position to controllers on the ground, and triggers TCAS, the Traffic Collision Avoidance System, a fail-safe system designed to prevent accidents. The Legacy's pilots must have assumed their transponder was working, but shortly after the impact, it became clear there was a problem. Do you get the TCAS on? Yes, the TCAS is off. I just keep an eye out for traffic. You got anything on 21.5? I got nothing on 21. So what's with TCAS? The lawyer insists the Brazilian Air Force and the NTSB are wrong when they allege that his clients inadvertently turned off the legacy's transponder. There's no evidence that they turned it off in any way. Certainly not intentionally, nor is there evidence that they turned it off inadvertently. At what point did they realize that it was not working properly? Well, they realized that it had not worked properly when something hit them in airspace. It's now up to the Brazilian courts to sort it out. David Rimmer says he thinks about the accident every day, but he's just thankful to be alive. Do you feel in any way guilty to have survived? No, not at all. Just grateful. He says he still flies frequently, hoping that having survived one mid-air collision, lightning won't strike him twice. I'm David Wright for Nightline in New York. What a harrowing tale of survival and heartache there. Thanks to David Wright for that. And you can read William Langovish's article in the January edition of Vanity Fair, which is on newsstands now. And to hear additional audio from those flight recordings, go to VanityFair.com.